What's going on, gentlemen, and the few ladies that are here? Today is going to be wild. It took me 38 minutes to get here, and I only had to go about three miles. This traffic in this city is insane. But with that, we're going to discuss how you can escape the shrinking middle class. Why? You don't even want to be part of the middle class. You don't, because the middle class... <clears throat> has a big bullseye right on its face, its shoulders, its back. It's got bullseyes all over it because it's a cash cow for the government. It's a cash cow for businesses. It's a cash cow all the way around. You do not want to be part of the middle class. So how do you escape that? We're going to talk about that and a lot more. First thing you must do is get your mind right. Let's talk about this escape. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be some hack. It's not going to be some 999 course you can get. It's going to take a phenomenal amount of willpower, determination, and courage to get out of that middle class. It's going to be a journey. It's going to be hard because there are so many internal, external forces designed to keep you in the middle class so you can be pimped like a $2 hooker. You got your friends, family, parents, all like go to school. You become an indentured servant. You get you a good job. There are no more pensions. There are very few companies that offer pensions, military, United States government. That's maybe a few more. <clears throat> but the first mental shift that you must undertake is it all falls on your shoulders. You must accept responsibility for everything that happens to you. And I'm going to tell you something that's a little weird. Whenever I get in my vehicle, and this is from living in a bad neighborhood, as soon as I get in my vehicle, I lock the doors so nobody could just come and like jump in the vehicle and point a gun to me. It's like they could point a gun at the glass, but this is the procedure. Get in the car, start it off, put it in gear. That's ingrained in me because I have to take responsibility for all the actions I can. Is it right that somebody would come open up my door, put a gun at my head and take my vehicle and my money? No, it's not right. But what's right? You can only manage what you can handle and you can only handle what you plan for. So I my plan to prevent muggings is to get in my vehicle, start it up, put it in gear and get to rolling and just don't sit there like a sitting duck. Other things that you must do. You must take a long, deep look at yourself and you must examine the behaviors that got you to where you are. Because one of the biggest things that's gonna happen during this transformation is you're gonna be very, very, very upset. You're gonna feel that you were lied to. You're gonna feel that you're taken advantage of. You're gonna feel that no one gave you the right tools. You see all of these kids here on YouTube and all over the internet and all on the gram driving Lambos. Porsche, Range Rovers. Every time you turn on the gram, there you see it. And you're like, what are they doing that I am not doing? Well, my friends, gentlemen, ladies, uh, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault at all. I used to feel like I was misled, led astray, bamboozled, tricked. And then I realized it wasn't my mother's fault. When, you know, it, it was no one's fault because institutionally, we're all institutionalized. Anyone who knows what institutionalized means, put that in the comment. We're all institutionalized because you hear like when convicts get out of jail, if they institutionalize, which is they become accustomed to being in prison, they almost like it. We're institutionalized as American citizens in a set of doctrine and behavior that is designed to keep us in the middle of class. 
That's why it's so hard to get out. Because everybody, you know, like the agents in the Matrix, like anyone can become an agent. You could be just in Subway getting you your foot long. And then the girl behind the counter could just say this one thing like, well, you know, people go to college, make more money. And in your mind, you know, that's not true because I put out a video telling you that that's not true. When you subtract the people who are doctors and engineers, the folks who have to go to school to become what they're going to become, you take their income out. The income differential is roughly the same. But no, she says that activates your middle class income gene. And next thing you know, you're like second guessing your thoughts of starting the business, second guessing your thoughts of creating some second guessing a lot of things. Because you don't know what you're capable of. How many folks here still have dreams? Go ahead and put that in the comments. If you've got a dream, if you've got something that you want to do, a dream, your life desire, trip, whatever, put that in the comments. I want to see how many folks are still dreaming because there's a lot of folks who don't dream anymore. I don't dream. They don't need, they're scared to dream because they've had dreams all their whole lives and nothing has happened and nothing's worked out and they are scared to dream. They're scared to think of some bigger, bolder and grander. Because it hasn't happened, because it hasn't worked out, because they had not had the right set of tools. They're scared to dream. Can you imagine being in that position in your life where you are afraid to have a dream? When I was in the military, my mother became legally blind. She could make out shapes and stuff, but she couldn't work. So at that point, for not one, not two, but three years, I was the sole source of income for the family. And I, I wasn't happy about it. I did what I had to do because that was family. I wasn't happy about it. My dream was to go in the military, stay three years, then go to University of Alabama and try to walk on the football team. I trained. I lifted weights. I was running on the beach. I was trying to get in shape to, you know, go there and be part of the roll tide. I had to re-up because my mother was legally blind and the family needed me. I wasn't happy about that. I was just like, because, see, I know that dream had a window. You don't go and be 25, 26, 27 walking on to the University of Alabama football team. It just doesn't happen. That's when you're supposed to slide off into growing up. So that dream wasn't deferred. That dream was knocked out of the window. And I had another dream. I wanted to be a writer. Try it once, fail. Try it again, fail. And there's something that's really interesting about the choice that I made. My mother got sick again when I was writing my first book. And I got a call from my brother like, Mom's sick. What are you going to do? I can't do nothing. I mean, what are we going to do? I've already played that role before. Click. All right. Hung up. He ain't talked to me for three years. See, the expectation was for me to put aside my dreams once again and do whatever I needed to do while their lives stayed the same. So he caught mom. Still didn't really talk to me to this day. And that's cool because I know in my heart of hearts I did something very noble, very decent, something I really didn't have to do. A lot of folks wouldn't have did that. And I knew because I had a choice. And this is when I was working on the first book which I did not finish, <clears throat> but I knew that if I had stopped doing what I had was doing, and even if it was for six months, and then I got back on my the track of writing the book, I would have never made the money that I would have made. I never would have had the opportunities that, that have come my way. I wouldn't be here now talking to you because the only reason that I was able to crush it with my self-published book with typos, because I was first. I had such a head start on everybody that was talking about storage auctions. I was 14 months and a few days ahead. There was, I mean, they were working overtime, but I already had like several hundred videos. I had a blog, I had stories. I, as soon as was, anyone went and like, oh, storage auctions, bam, Glendon Cameron, bam, Glendon Cameron. If I had waited, if I had did what they wanted 
me to do, I would still be middle class. It's definitely. Because this is something that happens. The older you get, the less courageous you become. So I would have got older because I was already in my 40s. So let's say, you know, I went home, took care of mom till she died, then started this journey. Let's see, she died 2011. No, 2000. No, 2000. No, 2014. She died 2014. Francine died 2011. So I would have been starting now. You know how much momentum, how much time, how much, how many lessons, how much exposure I would have lost doing the right thing? See, I did the right thing once in my life. I was young enough to recover. But instinctively, because when he was on the phone with me, I was like, you got to be kidding me. Who here has had that type of situation where you were the sacrificial lamb of the family, where everyone counted on you to do the right thing? Everyone counted on you to be selfless, to not even worry about your life, to pick up the pieces, to loan money, to struggle, to how many of you are that person? You know, the person that gets messed over, the person that gets forgotten. How many of you that person? I told you a story. I had to repossess my car from my own mother because she wouldn't do right. And I look back at that decision and I remember that phone call with a great deal of clarity. It was very abrupt and he hung up. And I remember feeling like this is a good decision. And it's got to be in the top three decisions of my life. Going on saying, no, the family, I got to write this book. And the reason I felt that I was in that position, because I did it before. And I wasn't going to do it again. Older you get, things change. Those windows that are big gaping holes in the galaxy, in the cosmos, they become like windows on a house. You only got so much room to jump through. And they will close up on you in a heartbeat if I had waited a year to write my first storage auction book. The shows would have been on. Someone else would have got all that traction. I had so much content that was up there. That was able, that was the reason I was able to win with my little funky self-published book with the typos because I was first because I worked my ass off. And for many of you, it's not going to take that for you to lead the middle class. It's not going to take that kind of effort. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But part of being in the middle of the class is social indoctrination that is very deep, that's very hard, that's very challenging to get around. And what happens is you have people who buy in and they sell out on their dreams. There's a lot of people I know. It's like, what's your dream? Oh, nothing. Take a trip. Go to Hawaii. Go to London. These are people's dreams. Not build a business, not make an impact on the world, not do it, write a book. This is people have downgraded their dreams to fit into their reality. Dreams are not supposed to sit fit in your reality. Dreams are supposed to explode your reality. They're supposed to make things bigger and better. They're supposed to scare you. When you dream, you should tremble. You should it should hit you in the feels. It's like, oh, that's my dream. But people aren't dreaming anymore. People have been beaten into submission by this social construct called the fake middle class. Because this is why you got to escape the middle class. It ain't real. And it's a sliding scale. What's the middle class? Buy a house, get a mortgage, work 30 years to pay it off, pay three times as much for it. Buy cars on credit, get everything on credit, lose almost half your money in interest. When someone explains it to you like that, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's what it is. That's what the middle class. The middle class equals debt. And what you want to do to escape the middle class is to learn how to be a creator and learn how to sell some stuff. And I got you on the selling of stuff. Let's do this right now while we got while we got the people here. Let's see. Let's get into this. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, Let's see. All right. 
let's go here. So this is what I'm going to do today, and it's going to be a doozy. All right. I had talked about this earlier. I worked on this today. So asking for the money. Now, as you'll see here, there's a lot of content in here. Selling like your life depends on it. This gets very real. Craigslist, the story of survival, almost got fired. So what's coming to this is making an offer, pimping the DMs, creating a sales funnel, pre-selling, in-person presentation, selling on the phone. So these are some other modules that are coming, and there will be a lot more. So what you can do, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do this like right now. Right now, right, you know, not like uh, a regular right, but like right, right now. Let's see. I'm going to go into the coupons, and I'm going to create a coupon. And what I'm going to do, and these courses are below the video, so we're going to go 40% off that. And we're just going to go... We're going to use holla at me. Yeah, that's what we're going to do for that. And we're going to do 50. So, whoops, 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 whoops. I, I completely did that wrong. Is it going to let me out? Yes, it is. It's going to let me do that. So. We're getting rid of the first one. And for you, you can get any course, but I suggest you get the sales course because it's going to be dope. And I'm just going to put it all lowercase. Holla at me. All lowercase. This is what it's. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Wait a minute. Oh, hold on. Let me make sure. Yeah, there's two A's. So, because that didn't look right. All right. So, this is the code. You can get anything in Hustlers Kung Fu University. 40% off. Dun, dun, dun. I feel like Jaws. Because there it is. Boom. Holla with two A's at me is the code to get in because I want you to win. And oh, yeah, all this stuff because I just jotted this down because I ran out of time on the way over here. So all that stuff's going in the course plus some more because you you got to learn how to sell. You, you got to. I don't care what anyone says. If you learn how to sell, that's one of the greatest lessons that anyone can ever teach you. Because once you learn these lessons and skill sets, it's for life. I talk about a set of skills that I picked up in six weeks of hard-earned work that I've used for 16 years. It took me six weeks to figure this stuff out, and I've used it for 16 years. That's in the course. There'll be a lot more, and I'm going to break it down. All right. So let's get in the chat room. Let's see what, what we got going on here. <laughs> Let's see. Good Lord. Y'all are ready for this one. Y'all are ready. Let's go to the beginning of the chat. Because uh, one day I'm not going to be able to. Why? Oh, there we go. What's up, Johnny Walton? What's up, Archangel? Regular web guy, Al Gordon. Ronna Stocker. Oh, you back. Honey Bunny, regular web guy. Charm Smith. Benny. Ray Williams. Uh, let's see. What's up, Dashiki Jones? What's up, Stefan? Rona Stocker, Benny. Y'all got this. Agent J. Poole, what's up? What's up, Move Motivation, Kindle Vision, Steve Wilson, Afri. Grant Cardone and I come from the same generation. 
Savior Games, Jade Rick, Lamold, Baruch, this dude Bakes, the one Bryant, Wayne Fraser. What's up, Stefan Conscious? Uh, Benny, that's true. Most people are stuck in consumer mode. They're not stuck in creation mode. Uh, teaching, in my opinion, has just gone to hell, man. Benny. Erica Nicole, what's up? Shotgunning Elite Uber Automation Partner will with Volvo and Full Automated Semi from Cali. Y'all ain't seen nothing, Shotgun, for, for one Elite. I mean, this is just the beginning of this. And when this catches fire, I have a gun because there's going to be a lot of people who are not going to have work. I think we're going to have a basic monthly minimum for everybody because we're going to have to. Health before wealth, what's up? The Sheiky hoodwinked, definitely. Pretty much, Rona. Thank you, Steve Wilson, for the super chat. Sense of reality, what's up? Young Brandon. Dasha Mays. Honey Bunny, institutionalized, trained to follow a certain system that ultimately serves a select few, generally to be workers and consumers. Pretty much. What's up, Juwan Johnson? Johnny Wilson. I've heard you had to go to college to make more money ever since I was growing up. All right. Thanks, Patty. Ray Williams. Luzo. Tone Lee. Corey. You still have dreams? Awesome. Honey Bunny, I still have dreams. I'm living it. All right. This guy, Conscious Ether. Hot Song Beat, still dreaming. Asian B Pool, still burning. Lamode, I'm still dreaming. The Wild Jones Report, what's up? Since reality, I still have my dreams. Last semester of college, okay? Mr. Knowledge, the king is here. All right, Johnny Walton, do your thing. Conjure, I have dreams. Juwan Johnson, I do sometimes. Okay, that's real. Uh, Tony Lee, I'm dreaming big. Uh, Benny, I do. People are dead, Glenda. Just look at their pupils. They're dead. Wow. This dude bakes dreaming more than ever. Health before wealth. I'm dreaming and visualizing good. What's up, Raquel? Electric Beauty, I dream, but I finally started my skin line for extremely dry skin. Cool. Afri. <laughs> What's up, Mark? What's up, Marquis? Jawan Johnson, but most of us are surrounded by dream killers. That is the truth. Regular well give. I still dream how I have something to keep reminding myself. Pretty much, Benny. Shiki Jones, this is true. When I worked out at the county jail, I could see the similarity between inmates and how the privates acted toward when I was a drill sergeant. Very similar. Very similar. Even though I did six years in the military, it never really took. I, I sold my BDUs and I didn't join the reserves because I was out. Eric and Cole still dreaming. Baroque winners. I still have an issue of getting out of the employee mindset where we get used to being told what to do. That's a big thing. That's a big thing. And, and the fact that you recognize that gives you a lot of power to change that. All right, Benny. That's a good book. <laughs> that's cool, Stefan. Erica Nicole, my older brother did me like that when I didn't let him and this dog live with me. Not to mention my cousin, her child, and partner always stand with me. Woo! People use you like your toilet tissue. Our art still chasing my dream. Hadn't caught up to him just yet. Cool. Uh, Dwayne, Brian, Glenda, can you imagine how many suckers have spend their heart on money for one day? Mm-hmm. Raquel, I want to own villas and Turks and Caicos and be a billionaire. You're young enough. Benny, college Sanders. Colonel Sanders was 64 when he started KFC. Yeah, that that's true, but people were sturdier back then. I mean, he went through a lot. Ray Kroc went through a lot. Cool. Uh... Honey Bunny, I was that person. Shut it all down. Hot sun bones always, and they treated me like crap. It was rough for a lot of people when I started putting me first. They get offended when you put yourself first. Agent J. Paul, the family just stopped calling me for rescues. I put me first. That said I'm an, an asshole for that. Oh, well. 
I was the big no to my family. Tell me why right now my niece needs a car to go to college classes. They're looking at me to get our car, and I paid 3000 for food and for the family union one year. Remember what I say, you keep a low profile when you have money? That's why. A little no never killed no one. I think most dream people dreams are not real, but the images you put in you by teachers, media, most people never get the chance to dream is killed in childhood. The Hectrix. A lot of people don't dream. Health before wealth. I'm the firstborn. My siblings had to be the person, have been the go-to person for money all the time in the process of teaching my mom and older sister money management skills because it gets old and knowing that's you, the, you, the daddy, you, the, the daddy. Can I get a dollar? Daddy, can I get a dollar? That that's really how that shapes up. Jawan Johnson, I know this girl who's in her twenties who has no kids and has traveled to over seventy countries. She's going to be a pretty remarkable person. What's up, Randall Riley? Uh, whoa, that jumped really quick. Oh, yeah, it is fake, man. It is since reality. She's actually attractive. <laughs> she's pretty smart. If she's went to 70 countries before in her 20s. That's pretty much Joshua Hill got two older sisters, both employed. However, a year doesn't go by without one of them asking for money because they short been absent minded and handling their funds. This course is about how to sell Ray Williams. Uh, Dwayne Bryant, actually, no, I just got rid of that. You can use the 40% off because I did say this morning that that was going to be good until I started the stream. And it actually was, I was halfway in the stream before I got rid of it. <laughs> Lose all the time. Black Knight Code, now follow your secured credit card plan. Open two secured for 5K each. Already have... 10k unsecured capital one been stuck in limbo for 670 690 score hoping this will break me through the 720 if you got two ten thousand dollar if you got ten thousand dollars in unused credit check your credit score you may be there thanks kashan Now, since reality, being professional is the way to go. Not the colloquial definition of professional where you wear a suit and have a degree, but actually pro professing a skill or vocation. That's what I'm talking about. You actually know your stuff. Many people think wearing a suit is professional. Some of the most professional people wear flip-flops. These would be colders. Shotgun in the light, I'm, I'm honest with myself, this year, 2008, in debt, paying off my car next year, testing, testing, more testing. That's what you got to do. Because, Sean, I don't know no one that lives alone and single in Southern California. Wow. All right, my Mia Jones, Ben Israel. I have dreams and I'm 28. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you, Steve, once again. Sure thing, because uh, we're going to get into some very esoteric stuff. Troy Glover, put yourself first or you'll end up last. Amen, amen, amen. That was my life for many years. My Amita Jones, this is duly noted to not let people know how much you make. Oh, you're funny. That's cool, Benny. I passed my security plus exam. My mother went automatically to giving her money. Wow. So that that's just one of the things that you got to do because you got to dream. Now, I'm, I'll have a course ready, but I'm going to also create a course on how to be a creator. I'm, I, I'm just going to let you know. I even talked about it in the course. It's coming. It ain't even ready. And I, I should say that what I'm going to do with Hustlers Kung Fu University 
all those 40 courses and stuff, I'm going to do that. And then this new thing, which I'll get started probably sometime later this year, will be called Seven Figure Content. It's going to be a YouTube channel. It's going to be a book. It's going to be a lot of stuff because I've seen some stuff and I've learned some stuff and I see that no one else is doing it that way. So that that's going to be coming. Because, uh, I mean, if you don't have ambition to leave the middle class, you could be there the rest of your life. You could be struggling the rest of the life. You could be in a situation where you are you are catching it. You know, I'm feeling particularly generous today. Hold on a second. So let's see. What can we do for the people? Uh, we can't do that for the people. All right. Here we go. All right. So let's see what we're going to do. do, do. Uh, since someone asked for it, I'm going to do 70 percent. And I'm going to do. Never broke. It's the never broke. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Never broke action pack. And the code word is holla. You know, like just holla. And I'm going to put that. I'm going to just let that be a surprise. So for whoever asked for that, you can go ahead and get that now. <laughs> go ahead and get that now. Let's see how many people jump on that. Okay. So get back into this. Uh, that's true. I hang around so many coders all dressed in T-shirts and jeans and shorts, and they all make six figures. It, we're, we're moving to a world where what you know is more important than what you look like. It should have been that way, but it hasn't been that way. And many industries are still, it's still what you look like is more important, more important than what you know. How many folks have seen an ugly news reporter lately? I was in London, and I know this, and not to say that these people were ugly, but they were not as attractive as what we have over here and they never would have made it on television and they were on all the shows just regular people who were very good in their profession kind of like the walter Con walter concrete who was the best in the business would not make it today uh for eric Williams, for real moved into a brand new luxury apartment by myself and all my married friends were like real austin is expensive <laughs> oh what did i say Everything that you don't need, it is dropping in price. Um, I took a picture of this television that I plan on getting in six months. It's a uh, 75 inch. It's like 21, 2,500 bucks. I'm not getting it. I know in six months that television is going to be 1,500 and do more. But the house, that's going to go up. The things that you don't really need are dropping in price and the things that you need, gas, your mortgage, a food. It's up, it's up, it's up. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jerome Carter, say, Glenn, how come nobody ever talks about how expensive paying for benefits such as medical insurance can be for an entrepreneur? Never heard anyone speak of that. Well, one of the reasons you don't hear that is a lot of entrepreneurs are married and they are on their partner's health insurance. So they don't even worry about it. And I don't speak on it because it's only like 700 bucks a month. And they're not going to speak on it because the, the thing is, health insurance is like this big maze. I can get a policy based on my particulars for this and then someone else try to get the same policy and can't get it. Lots of fugly newscasters lately. That's good. Steve Wilson, the reason people use Colonel Cern story because most people want to wait 63 years of their life to become productive at 64. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. <laughs> So 
So th- th- this is what it is. Like if you, you want to be partner, let's talk about escaping the middle class and like really, really burning it. Uh, one of the things you got to do is get out of debt. You, you got to get out of debt. Uh, I'm real serious about this because that's a big thing in my life. I've gotten, I have no personal debt. I have a credit card that I use and I pay off as I use it. And that's the extent of it. And I don't even consider that debt because I never pay interest. I spent over 200 K last year and then pay a lick of interest on that credit card. You got to manage your money better because what I see with this recession is not going to be as debilitating as the last recession for certain people. These will be people who have no debt. These will be people who have marketable skills. Marketable skills are worth more than money. You got the skills, you can get money. You just have money, money disappears after a certain period of time and loses its value. <laughs> Steve Wilson about 800 bucks. The original Lady Pimp Glennon, I know you say learning to sell is the path to building wealth, but. I've always been a negative experience with salespeople. I bought some I felt used. How do I overcome this? The original lady pimp. One of the things, like, I, I sell my stuff to y'all, right? Because I know it works. You know why I know it works? It worked for me because this is the stuff that I use to leave poverty, which I use to leave the middle class, which I lose, used to get to the creative class. I am in the creative class. I'm a creator. I make stuff. This is the stuff that's worked for me, and I've had to fine tune it. But, you know, let's have this health insurance thing. If you're going to let health insurance hold you back, and I want you to really think about this. And this kind of goes back to managing your money. If, let's say, health insurance policy for single people is 1500 bucks a month. It's a grip, right? That's, uh, what, 18000 a year. And you have a job that pays you $60,000 a year. And it covers your health insurance. It's okay. Now let's say you had a business that paid you one fifty. You had to pay eighteen. You still are like ninety. You're still seventy grand ahead. And this is one of the middle class things that happens because people start like, how many people have you said I got a job for the benefits, even though it don't pay a lot? One of the things you've got to do is treat your life like a business. Yeah, I mean. 700 bucks is a lot for regular people. But one of the things I'm telling you is you don't want to be regular people. You you don't want to be regular. You want to get out of that regular stuff because that regular stuff is going to kill you. And regular stuff is buying, you know, buying, having car payments. Regular stuff is paying for everything in, on credit or, or my favorite, the interest free 12 months. You know how many people get caught with that? It's like month 13 and all of that interest rolls up in that payment. So. It's anything. Um. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about necessities are constantly increasing where luxuries are staying the same or decreasing. So true. I mean, it is how the uh, mini crash hit Austin because I got too much free rent on the apartment, a free garage for four months and facing a lake. Ross, I mean, it's everything. <laughs> Johnny, you got to have skills to pay the bills. All my debt together is 2700 You need to start working on that, pushing that down as fast and furious as you can. Uh, good debt is like if you got a low interest loan on an apartment building, that's cool. You know, your mortgage, that's kind of debatable, but that could be cool. But if you've got commercial debt, you've got car debt, if you own a truck that you've got debt on, but that truck's making you money every week, that's fine. But just to have a lot of consumer debt is very dangerous right now. I mean, this is one of the things that you're going to have to do. You're going to have to make that decision because understand it's scary being responsible for you. I, I know I totally get it. You know, it's like nice to have that, that job insurance, but 
you come out here in the world in the in the world of the raw and the rugged you're gonna have to foot that bill and it's gonna be a grip and one of the things that i do about that is like okay how can i make money to make this once again you got to press on it you got to make more money <laughs> health before wealth that is just wrong man that is just wrong Tangerine Russians come by a semi and they don't care about insurance. They want the money. Joshua Hill. I know there's more and more luxury auto brands creating models that are in between high performance and base models at a more affordable price, like a 300 horsepower AMG. Oh, you've noticed that. They're trying to once again catch that middle class. Yes, I work at school 25K a year, but the health benefits. Um, I'm going to show you how that can hurt you. Let's say, once again, you do 1500 you pay. Just put you pay, right? And you make 150 k a year. And you pay $18,000 a year in health insurance. If you make 150 for 10 years, that's $1.5 million. And you pay 180,000 for health insurance. The additional income can buy you three or four rental properties. You're still paying that 18 G's, that 180 G's. It's just, I got to be careful how I say this. You got to reprogram yourself. You got to come out here and say, okay, yes, my health insurance is going to be expensive. Uh, this is one of the reasons that Republicans don't want universal health care because it would create a more level playing field and it would create a situation where more creatives can make more money. That's something they don't talk about. Pretty much since the reality. Justin Henry, it's also who you have around you. I just left my ex fiance because she didn't want to do anything in her business that I created for her. Didn't make an effort to build a credit score. I dipped. Get your mind right. Get your money right. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the reasons that, like, if you can become a good salesperson, and I'll talk about this in disruptive mating. Um, if you put it in your mind, you can find a partner, not someone to live off of, not someone to pimp. But if you're making like $120,000 a year, do you know there's a lot of uh, health insurance plans that will let people put someone they're not married to on their plan? And you can just go look. I'll kick you 300 bucks a month if you put me on your health insurance plan. You know how many people would do that? Because this ain't going to cost them 300 bucks a month. They're going to be like, once again, this is, you know, one of those things, but this is something you can do. If you find someone that has a job that doesn't require the people to be married to put them on their health insurance. Long, long, long time ago, when I was at Rent-A-Crate, stating this girl, she just did it. She just she worked for Blue Cross, Blue Shield of Georgia, and she's like, no, no, you need health insurance. She just put me on there. I am not kidding. I barely used it, but she put me on there. So there's ways around that if you are fully being dynamic and you know how to talk to people. And that's why you need to get this sales course, because I'm going to teach you how to sell anything. You know, I, I really enjoy these little chats because y'all make me remember stuff that I have forgotten about. Because I, I really forgotten about that. I was on her plan about, I was on her plan even after we broke up. <laughs> I was on her plan for like six months after we broke up. It was kind of crazy. What's up, Walton? Yeah, that you can do that too. 
What's up, charlatan? So you got to learn how to sell a lot of things. Because see, in the course, because I can't talk about certain things here on YouTube, but in the course, I can let loose because I need to put that down there because I have to take notes. Because this is going to be a module. Because this is a, this is, you hustling, baby. How to get insurance from a person. And see, this could be a business arrangement. Because if that person benefits um, very well from this, um, you got people who don't even know each other living together. I want you to think about that. You got folks who don't even know each other who are living together. We'll put up an ad on next door uh, roommates.com and move someone in they don't even know in their personal space so but thank you for that because that's going to be part of the course i'm going to tell you how to hook that up so all right let's go ahead and do this let's go through the um huh i need to there it is it's like what are you doing all the way down there all right so let's talk about some of these courses. All right. Let's get into it. All right. So what we got here is, what is this one? Ask it for the money. There's already stuff there. You can use your 40% off to get that, or you can get the Never Broke Action Pack and get this course as well, because it is in the uh, Never Broke Action Pack. So that's one way. And I have made that 70% off, so you can get that. And what you can do is go here. Uh, hustle camp. Let's see. Fat cat secrets working on that. Actually, I need to bring that up to 1099. Isn't that cute? 1099. Cause I've done a lot there and I'll be doing more there tomorrow and I'll be adding to the sales course tomorrow. So we got that. Then we have do I have too many windows open all right there we go so let's see let's go into the never broke action pack to make sure that I have that yes so if you want to get more bang for your buck they never broke action pack 600 bucks. You get 75% off. No, 70, 70%, not 75. And you get all of this. Plus you get direct sales. How to stop being broke. I am a firm believer in it because it worked for me and it's worked for a lot of other people. I have trained. If you make more money, a lot of your problems disappear. So you can get 40% off anything here at hustlers, Kung Fu university. Or you can go here and just, well, actually, you can just pick whatever you want. Oh, I need to change that. So I will. And you can go writing for cash, the pure mindset bundle. Uh, next week, I'll be addressing the tax layer for the average citizen to win. We got a nice little flow going here. Uh, every day I'm doing training, creating content. Teaching you guys how to make money. So how's that for a win? Okay. Let's get out of that. So there's some, a lot of stuff that's coming. I mean, I can't like just every day go down the list because it's too many. I mean, it's too many things. I would literally spend an hour just going down what's coming this year in the hustle camp. So. Sure thing, Dwayne. All right, so I'm getting ready to go eat dinner. I'll be back tomorrow at 8.30, and we will have another burner. 
So you have a few hours after the stream to go ahead and make your purchases. The links are below the video and the codes is HOLLA, H-O-L-L-A, for the 40 for the 70 percent off of the Never Broke Action Pack. And it's HOLLA at me with two A's for everything else, 40 percent off everything else. So pick whatever you want. I'll be back tomorrow with 830. Uh, there will be a blazing new topic. So with that, gentlemen, ladies, I will see you in the AM. Have a good one. And remember, you got to leave the middle class. You got to leave that regular stuff behind. You, you, you got to. You can no longer be a regular person. Promise me you will not be a regular person. Put in the comments, I am not going to be regular no more. You got to change your life. So with that, I'll see you in the morning, 830, with another blazing stream. Get on the text notification list, which is also under the video if you want to be notified when that's going down. Peace.